I would like to turn things over now to Bree Diaz Marino, who leads our education vertical. She's actually our vertical director and has a uh, pretty significant experience in the education field as well as startups and technology. And I'll let her give a little bit more background on herself. Um, so Bethany, one moment and we'll hand things off. Hi there. Thanks, Brett, for that great intro. I'm thrilled to be here today. Jumping right in, uh, today we're going to talk about the basics of crowdfunding and share some really awesome use cases for crowdfunding in the education in particular, and then really talk about some keys to running a great campaign, focusing in on perk ideas, um, as well as uh, sharing a few examples of overall campaigns. So let's jump right in just to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I have worked in a variety of different capacities in the education space, from running a nonprofit to consulting strategically and in the finance space. So great to be here at Indiegogo, bringing all of that together and empowering folks to move the whole education field forward. So we are uh, at Indiegogo, actually, um, we're the first in the field to share uh, crowdfunding with the world. Um, we were founded back in 2008 with the belief that everybody should be able to achieve their dreams and everybody deserves access to that uh, capacity for getting resources. So to that end, since we were founded, we've uh, continued to believe that anyone, anywhere should be able to crowdfund for anything, as long as it's legal, of course. And um, to that end, we've now expanded and are in 196 countries and territories around the world and also have uh, campaigns of all sorts, from film to music to education to nonprofits to you name it. We've had it um, on Indiegogo. And now we've had over 150,000 campaigns run on Indiegogo and have millions of people who do visit the site every week and contribute millions of dollars to the thousands of campaigns that are running at any given time on Indiegogo. Uh, in particular, we're known for our great customer resources. We have strong customer happiness team, as we call them, 24-7 support line available. And we also have a lot of thought leadership materials. And uh, Brett can mention a couple other webinars we even have available for you to check out um, when, when you're done with this one. Yeah, and excuse me, just to build off that, so today's webinar is really going to focus on education specifically, and there's a variety of different uses for crowdfunding within the education vertical. Um, however, we do have a couple of other webinars that will focus on introduction to crowdfunding, marketing 101, and top five common mistakes. So I definitely recommend checking those out. We try to keep them all short and sweet. Um, but if you have questions that you felt were unanswered from today that might fit into one of those categories, I definitely recommend checking those out. Great. And one of the amazing things about crowdfunding is that in the old model of philanthropy that we might be used to, it's often a one-on-one -on -one ask where a nonprofit is asking for funds from a person. And it's a traditional, more charity model. But crowdfunding brings us into a whole new world of connection, where today we are able to connect in a social way and in an economic way like we've never been able to do before. And so it's really a way to engage people as part of your movement and in your share enthusiasm for achieving your goals rather than a traditional uh, straightforward ask. It's almost a conversation. It's more of a movement. It's, um, really finding very interesting ways to bring that to education. Um, and for and for several reasons, we find that people do use crowdfunding for the funding side to raise money. That's certainly a big reason to use crowdfunding. But even be, beyond that, and in many cases, more importantly than that, crowdfunding is a way for you to gain visibility um, in terms of sharing your idea, getting uh, that uh, that idea out in the open, and moving it forward, almost like a, an advocacy movement or um, getting supporters for the change you want to see in the world. People also use it for gauging demand and mitigating risk. So if you have an idea and you want to refine that idea, you want to pressure test it, see where you're getting momentum and where you're not, uh, crowdfunding is a great way to do just that. You can see where are people putting their dollars, where are people commenting, what are, what are you finding does get momentum, what are people sharing, and where aren't you finding that momentum so that you know how to um, move, your, move your campaign and initiatives forward in a way that really works with the crowd. 
Um, and then this final one, connect with your audience. It's a great way to build your supporters. It's a great way to learn what your supporters care about. And it's a really um, good way to get the message out in an early way for a bigger message you might have down the line in the case of something like a film where you're developing um, a, a pre-audience for your film down the line, uh, things like that. So let's jump into some specific examples so you can get an idea of what it means in education. And actually, what I'd love to do here is jump right into the web. Brett's going to help me do that. Now, this uh, campaign I'm going to share with you is a great example of a school that is using crowdfunding. This is the Detroit Achievement Academy. And what they have done is they've actually gone and looked at best practices across charter schools around the world, and they are bringing those best practices together to create a charter school in Detroit. And they are ready, getting ready for opening their first year of classes this coming fall. And they've set an audacious goal of $100,000, but as you can see, they're already at the $27,000 mark with 20 days left to go. And there, this campaign is uh, very engaging for a few reasons. It's very personal. We've got the founder of the school sharing the, her personal story of why she came to it. We've got her perks on the right-hand side where she has everything from sending you a packet of seeds that includes the same seeds that she used to grow trees at the school itself to having your name on a wall at the school. Um, and on the left-hand side, you're seeing here the text described how she developed her curriculum and why it is going to be a, such a fantastic school and she also made it visually engaging. So this is just one example of a great, great campaign. I'll we'll switch back to sharing with you the, uh, um, the web app. Brett, can you help me get back to the Thank you. Awesome. So that's just one example. And now I'd love to jump in and talk to you about a few other use cases. So this next page shares use, ca use cases across different purposes in education, everything from students using crowdfunding to raise money for their fellowships over the summer, even for their tuition for school, for extra resources they need, like books and places to live to um, groups and clubs like sports groups that are using Indiegogo to raise funds for traveling for their sports team or musical groups that are using Indiegogo to raise funds to develop their next big album. Um, and also we're finding that teachers are using Indiegogo. We have here an example um, this astronaut is a fantastic Latino astronaut who a teacher in San Jose brought into her classroom to show her students a great example of a STEM profession that they could go into and they used crowdfunding to bring him there to the class. And we're also seeing institutional uses here, like the school we just saw. There's schools that are raising funds to support their general funds. And we're also seeing some really interesting corporate engagement here. This example on the bottom left is the Dallas, Texas Urban Garden was part of a larger campaign that Whole Foods participated in to uh, support 100 urban gardens across the country and enable them to raise funds to support their work. Many of those gardens were at schools themselves. So I want to share with you um, some reasons why people contribute. And actually, I'll turn it over to Brett to share that with us. Great. So we've talked to, Bree's talked a little bit about, you know, some different project ideas and how they relate to the education vertical specifically. Um, but a lot of questions that we get for people that are just learning about crowdfunding or engaging in it for the first time is, why would someone give me money? You know, I might be raising something that I know I'm passionate about, but what is going to convince someone else to, to contribute to me or my campaign? And we found that these, we call them the four Ps, and people contribute primarily for either passion, they're passionate about what you're doing or the cause that you're working on or just the project in general. And, and a lot of these overlap as well. Um, as you can see here, we've got participation and pride are two other key characteristics as to why people contribute. 
a lot of times if, if you're building something successful that's going to get nationwide or sometimes even global attention, people want to be a part of that. They want to know that they're either helping out your cause or helping you achieve your goals, and people want to be a part of something successful. Uh, a lot of times they'll take pride in helping you reach your goals, especially if it's something that they're equally as passionate about themselves. And then lastly, you'll see we have perks. Um, this is one of the most obvious ones, but, but for those who might have a passion, but you know that might not be enough to push them over the edge, we found that offering perks or rewards for their contributions is a fantastic way to get people engaged. And this really allows you the chance to connect with people on a much more personal level. And you can engage with them beyond the typical methods of, of commerce. So in a lot of instances, you can sell a product or sell a service, and that's all people have access to. Well, here, you can create experiences, you can create services, products, behind the scenes glimpses of things that they may never have access to otherwise. And it allows you to make them a part of the process and a part of your project. And that's very compelling, especially if you tell it in a very emotional and personal way. So again, um, once you launch your projects, I think you'll find the more passionate you are about them and the better you are able to communicate that passion, the more interest you'll get from those around you. So on this next part, we, we talk about keys to creating a great campaign. And it, for those of you who have been into the crowdfunding scene for a little while or have been looking at a lot of different campaigns, some of these might seem familiar. Um, but really, these are the, at a high level, the very key concepts for creating a solid campaign. First and foremost is having an engaging pitch. I can't emphasize this enough. Um, you can have the greatest idea in the world but if you're not able to tell a good story in a compelling and engaging way, people won't, won't listen. And so being able to, again, connect with them on a very personal level, and it's making that personal plea to get them involved, get them behind the scenes with you, that's going to get people to act. So having an engaging pitch, having an engaging video and text, uh, making it visual with graphics. Think about yourself. Whenever you go to a campaign or a site, what are the things that interest you most? And really, at some time, you may only have 30, 40 seconds to capture someone's attention when they're first looking at your campaign. So you want to try and bring them in as quickly as possible. Next, uh, almost equally important, is having an attainable goal. A lot of times, uh, first-time crowdfunders are thinking they need to set the goal to whatever amount that they want to raise, ideally. And, and the, the advice that I always give is don't set it for the ultimate amount that you want, but set it for the minimum amount you need to move your project forward. People don't stop funding once you reach your goal. In fact, it's almost the opposite, where once you reach your goal, people will actually continue to fund above and beyond that. In fact, we found that uh, about 80% of campaigns that reach their goal will exceed it, and they do so by an average of about 20%. And the reason is, again, they want to be part of something successful. Once they see that you have what it takes to, to make your project succeed, others have, have put their hat in the ring, so to speak, then they're more willing to do so themselves. So you know, think, you know, another way to think about it is setting an internal goal and an external goal. The external goal can be public facing, and maybe it's a little bit lower, but internally you know that you want to double that goal or maybe even triple it. And you can have a game plan set up for when you reach certain milestones of making new announcements and, and letting the audience know what you're going to do if you reach this stretch goal next. So it's always something good to keep in mind. And then unique perks. Um, again, try and be unique. You know your audience best. You know your organization or your project or yourself best. And you know that you can offer unique experiences and things that are limited edition. Maybe they're not available anywhere else other than your campaign. Those are the types of perks that are going to really draw people in. And then lastly, proactive communication. Again, this is a campaign, and it's an ongoing effort. So as soon as you launch, you want to be actively engaged with everyone on your webinar, or um, excuse me, <laughs> with everyone on your campaign. And you want to be communicating. We recommend at least once to twice per week. Um, again, you know your audience best, so you'll know if you're over-communicating or under-communicating. But you want to call people out, recognize them for their contributions, let people know when you reach significant milestones, if you're getting news coverage. They, they contributed to your campaign for a reason. They want you to see you succeed. They want to help spread the word. So staying engaged and recognizing people for their efforts is going to help you create a fantastic campaign. All right, so I'm going to turn things back over here to Bree, get into a few more examples.
great. And I'm going to pull us back into the web itself. This campaign is from a gal who is at the an art school in Massachusetts, and she wanted to go to spend the summer working in Knowles, the outdoor leadership program. And she was accepted to Knowles, but didn't have the capacity to pay for the program itself. So she turned to crowdfunding and explained in a very, not even a high quality production video, but in a high quality emotional video where she shared the reasons why she wanted to do the course, how it would help improve her uh, schooling and how it would help improve her life um, in a very personal way. And then she um, provided some very personal perks. So she's actually the creator of beautiful jewelry that's related to the wildlife. She's been honing this skill at school. And so in um, as a token of thanks for contributions to her time in the outdoor leadership world, she would make for people rings. And these rings were very beautiful. They felt very personal, connected to what she wanted to do. And as you can see some of these pictures, she was able to show people what those would look like. And this campaign did quite well. She was able to raise her goal, and she's going to be able to now go on the Knowles program. And when I talked with her about where she actually found her contributors from, she said that she was amazed and thrilled to find that she had reached out to the folks at Knowles and asked them to share the campaign with their alumni, and that that had resulted in many, many contributions to her campaign, including a $1,000 contribution from someone she had never met who said that Knowles had been one of the most amazing experiences in their life and that they hoped that she had a similar experience in hers. This next campaign I'm sharing is the University of Ottawa Quidditch team. Now, Quidditch is that famous sport from the Harry Potter books in now movies, uh, which was hardly even an idea years ago, but now is prevalent on universities across the world. And what we found a few months ago was that there was the Quidditch World Cup coming up, and these university chapters each needed to raise funds in order to go to the World Cup in Florida. And so we had quite a few Quidditch teams pop up on Indiegogo raising funds. I particularly liked the University of Ottawa's campaign just because their film was very compelling. They mixed scenes of them actually playing Quidditch with written text describing uh, how they were approaching the game, and it was all very empowering um, and engaging. And then they had very fun perks, like a personalized limerick that they would write for you um, and th things like that. So they went to the World Cup, and actually, Brett, I don't think we've circled back to ask who which team won, but we should clearly find out who won the Quidditch World Cup this year. I hope they were on Indiegogo. Now, this example, you biome or you bio me, uh, is a very interesting example coming out of folks at several different places, including Oxford and UC Berkeley. They wanted to study what microbes are in the human body, and in order to do that, they needed to raise $100,000. You can see that that was their goal, and they also needed samples of microbes in human bodies. So they shared their research and why they were doing it in their video and then explained their perk sit structure, which was that, as you scroll down, you can see they have different sample collection kits you would receive based on different levels of perks you selected. So depending on how much you contributed, you would get a sample collection kit for a different part of your body. Now this is a very interesting model of what the world is now calling citizen science. and. As you can see from their goal amount, they actually hit their goal and surpassed it by three times, raising 350K, and also got samples they needed to really start off their research in a very strong way. And then finally, I want to show you one more model, and this model shows an example of what we call a partner page. And a partner page is a free dedicated landing page to aggregate campaigns coming out of your community. This one that I'm showing you happens to be SCAD, the Savannah College of Art and Design. And a few months ago, the SCAD students actually came to their administrators and said, hey, we are running quite a few Indiegogo campaigns. We would love to aggregate them in one place so that we can show our association with SCAD on our campaigns. And so SCAD said, well, that's a fantastic idea. And they reached out to us and we created this page for them. You can see now that each of these campaigns on the SCAD page has 
a little P to show that they are a partner. And it, when you scroll over it, it says SCAD. So it shows that they are part of the Savannah College of Art and Design uh, partner page. And in here we have aggregated quite a, a neat range of campaigns from film and people who are creating new films to people who have launched a new footwear line as part of a new fashion initiative to small businesses starting up. So it's a, a neat range, and the, these campaigns at SCAD are doing quite well. We have partner pages across all sorts of different use cases, including Startup America and uh, University of California, San Francisco, and others. Great. So now I just wanted to walk you through a few perks that are particular rel particularly relevant for education. So here are a few ideas starting from everything at the quite easy to fulfill end of a simple thank you card, either even just an online tweet of thanks, something like that is quite simple, to follow up photographs of your beneficiaries or of your locations of work. Uh, also, as Brett mentioned, experiences that are educational or cultural or unique are very, very valuable. Um, as are things related to places. People I have found find that they like to connect and virtually travel through the campaigns that they support. So if you can send a postcard from locations where you're working or uh, an artisan craft from a place where you're working, things like that are, are very engaging for folks to feel like they're actually part of what you're doing. Uh, similarly, you can offer unique items or experiences. So if your campaign is related to perhaps launching a new ed tech venture, can you offer uh, a unique experience of seeing that ed tech venture before it goes live and giving feedback on it and offer people a unique chance to be part of something they never would have been able to be part of before. And this leads into the idea of the early bird discount. Perhaps you can offer them a price that's more appealing because they're part of uh, contributing early or perhaps a high volume discount where you say you can get this ed tech uh, software for your entire classroom at a discount if you contribute right now. And then at the high end, um, we can see some of the naming rights models where you get to name a classroom, you get to name um, a building. And you know, I've actually seen some very creative naming rights uh, where somebody offered that the perk was you got to choose on a standardized test the answers A through D in response to a question were the actual potential answers that the teacher would have had on the test anyway, and answer E was one that you could come up with on your own. So you could have be part of a test students would take. So there's a lot of interesting innovation people take with these perks. Here are just a few of the um, perks that I like in particular, everything from a tour to seed packets to scarves and a simple thank you. Great, so um, getting towards the end of today's presentation here, uh, one of the things that sets Indiegogo apart, I think, from the competition is the fact that we are a an equal opportunity platform. And what that means is everyone on Indiegogo has a chance of being featured, whether it's in our newsletters, on our homepage, in our um, uh, blog postings, and so forth. And the way that we do that is through what we call our GoGo factor. And our GoGo factor, is a proprietary algorithm that we use to measure a campaign's activity and the response of the crowd. And so really it goes to show the overall activity and responsiveness of the public in general. And it does a fantastic job of identifying the campaigns that are really performing well, regardless if they uh, have a huge team behind them with lots of money and marketing power, or if it's just a, a someone in their home filming their video with an iPhone. Um, we've had all different sorts of campaigns that have been featured that have all done fantastically well. And the really nice thing about education in particular is, in a lot of instances, the education campaigns probably don't gross as much as a, a technology or gadget campaign, for example. Um, but that doesn't mean that you don't have the same types of opportunities on Indiegogo, and that's something that we're very proud of. Um, so these are just a few examples of our social media and blog posting that, that popped up there. Um, so kind of in wrapping things up, we just want to also reiterate, you know, one of the other main things that sets us apart is our personal touch with what we call our customer happiness team. And 
Um, this isn't just a standard support team. They're actually there to not only provide support for your technical issues and concerns for both you and your contributors, um, but they're really help there to consult with you as well. Um, as you can see here, we actually have a variety of resources. Um, our blog is a fantastic place to get insights and tips on how to run successful campaigns. In fact, the other day we just posted a, uh, a blog on all the different e-free resources you can use that will help you build a, a really successful campaign. So if you haven't done so already, I re definitely recommend signing up for it. We really only send out, I think, one email a week, one or two, so it's a fantastic way to stay up to date on crowdfunding in general. And then Indiegogo.com is just a great place to go and look at campaigns that are already doing it well. You can go to our website, you can filter based on your area, you can filter based on education, look at the ones that are most funded, and see what the really good campaigns are doing and take tips from them. It's a great way to learn and outside of our webinars and I highly recommend it. And then if you still have questions that weren't answered here today, um, you can always go to our help center, which as you can see here is uh, support.indiegogo.com. We have forums and basically you just start typing in a question and answers will just start popping up. I think we have over 90 help articles in our forum and they cover everything from technical questions about Indiegogo itself to crowdfunding tips and best practices and so forth. And finally, we have our team, which is support at Indiegogo.com. And you can always contact them with any questions you have. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, there will be a link that you'll receive after today that has uh, links to pages with our other webinars that we offer as well. So I think that just about wraps things up. I'm going to turn things over to Bree just to kind of wrap things. And then uh, while she's doing that, again, if anyone has any questions, we'll be opening it up here momentarily to help answer some questions you may have. Great. Thanks, Brett. Yeah, this page just shows a few final examples of campaigns from across use cases, professors, teachers, students making films, community charity events happening with students, um, international students as well as domestic students, and entrepreneurship in university settings. So it's been really fun to share with you some of the innovation going on in education around crowdfunding. It's a very exciting space, the treat to be part of it, and we'd be thrilled to work with, with all of you, and please do feel free to send any questions you have to us via the question function on this WebEx, and we will take those now. Okay, so we had one question come in from Bronwyn, and she said, if I want to launch a campaign and put out some information about it before we launch, when will I have access to the URL? That's a great question. So as soon as you create your campaign, you'll have access to the URL. Um, however, if it's not live yet, no one else will be able to see that. If they try and access the campaign, it'll just say that the campaign is not live and it'll be a hidden page. So only you'll be able to see it when you're logged in. Um, but you still can take screenshots or if you do want other folks to access your campaign early, you can either add them as a team member and they'll be able to access it or you can create a general team member account and give folks access to that account if you want to spread it around. Uh, but again, you do want to be somewhat careful with that because you don't want people having access to information they shouldn't. And we got a question about creative ways to promote education programs online. And I think there are a lot of ways to be creative with your promotion. Uh, first of all is to engage your close network. So ask folks from a diverse set of social networks to be your biggest advocates. And you can invite them to be campaign team members for your campaign where they'll actually show up uh, on the bottom of your campaign and these folks will be able to spread your message to their various social networks and that's a great uh, way to get a key set of people engaged with your campaign. Uh, so that's the first way. I'd also say that there are some really creative uh, ways to bring online and offline experiences together. So can you have perhaps a launch event where you bring together a speaker who can talk about your model and a, perhaps a beneficiary who can speak about the value of your model. And on the night before your campaign, uh, you share your campaign with the world via your social network, perhaps you bring together a more intimate group of people uh, in person and you have this event and you have laptops around the room and you suggest that folks contribute a certain amount to come to this uh, live event and then you facilitate those contributions during the course of the evening. It's a great way to get some early momentum for your campaign. We've also found some interesting 
use cases for what, what you might call gamification or having different kinds of context. So could you say, uh, for example, whoever refers the most people to your campaign will be able to have early access to one of the perks, or you could offer per, uh, perks that are uh, relevant for different populations and see which ones are claimed faster. And there are really interesting ways to think about this sort of contest mentality uh, that, that might be helpful too. So a question from Susan and she's asking, we have an environmental and an educational focus. What's the best choice of listing? This is a good question and there's no real right answer. Um, People choose categories for different reasons. Uh, some folks may go and find a category and they feel that the other campaigns that are currently being listed there aren't that strong. And so they might be more compelled to choose that category because they know that if they're going to have a strong campaign, they might be right at the top of those listings. Um, other folks may feel that they're always checking certain categories and they feel that that's where they're passionate. And so they feel that's where others might be checking as well, so they'll choose a category for that specific reason. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I think you try and choose the, the category that fits your project best, and if that covers multiple categories, um, then you'll just need to, to take a peek in there and, and see which one in comparison to the other campaigns that are listed uh, it, it might be best suited for. So we got the question of whether we have partner pages with specific schools, and the answer is yes, uh, very much so. We've launched partner pages with quite a few university level uh, schools, including the George Mason University, the University of San Diego, um, and then more recently with some specific programs in universities, such as the Berkeley Haas School of Business, and soon to be the uh, UPenn Graduate School of Education. Uh, we definitely have had partners that in include folks who are working in the K-12 space. EduQuest is a partner of ours there, um, and we're definitely open to building partner pages for additional schools in, in any level of education. All right, um, we had another question about, let's see here. Give me one moment here. Okay, so how do I gauge if my campaign needs to be edited regarding page views and contributions? I noticed I had 400 plus page views, page views but contributions weren't as equal. This is from Dominique. Um, so I think the question here is, once you launch your campaign, if you feel that you want to change certain pieces of it to make it a more effective campaign, uh, you can certainly do so. And that's actually one of the great things about Indiegogo that I think is different from a lot of other platforms is that you do have quite a bit of flexibility as the campaign is live. And we definitely recommend you recommend that you change your campaign and update it based on feedback that you're getting. That's, I think, one of the best benefits of crowdfunding is as you proceed through the campaign, you will get feedback, you will get information that you weren't previously aware of, and you want to make updates. And that could be anything from offering new perks to altering your pitch a little bit, um, to creating new updates, adding more images. Um, the one thing that is solid once you launch is your goal amount and your end date. And the reason that we, we don't alter those is for transparency purposes. Um, we need people to stick with those initial things when they launch in order to make sure that they have a, a clear and transparent campaign with their contributors. Um, perks, for example, if you do want to change them, again, those can't be altered themselves, but you can remove a perk and replace it. So if there's just minor details that need to be changed, you can take the initial perk down and replace it with one very similar with, with those updated changes. Um, that is a, a great question. And so uh, kind of a follow-up to that is, can you change the video during the campaign? And the answer is yes. You can always alter the video during the campaign. Some great questions. We have time for one or two more. So if you do have questions, again, go ahead and type them into the chat or the QA box. And we'll try and answer them here for you. And uh, we'll also be running a general open Q&A session here in the, in the next coming weeks. Bria is so graciously volunteered to collect some of the more common questions that we have and really just open things up so we have kind of a nice open session with everyone. 
Um, we're not sure if it'll be in webinar format or more of a Google Hangout, so we can get a nice, more visually appealing um, session. Um, but we always like to, to try and maintain open communication with everyone. All right, so we have time for one final question. If anyone has anything they'd like to ask either of us, just go ahead and type it in now. Otherwise, we might be able to wrap things up a little early today. Okay, fantastic. Well, uh, thanks everyone so much. We really appreciate you coming out and definitely stay tuned for future webinars. Um, oh, we did get one final one. Okay, so from Yvonne it says, how personal can my perks be? That's an interesting question, Yvonne. We have seen some very unique and interesting perks. Um, we, I actually remember someone launched a campaign and one of her perks was you got to come and stay at her house for three or four days in Germany. And of course, you know, she's certainly allowed to offer that as a perk. We brief, promptly called her and said it's probably not the safest thing to be doing. Um, but perks can be as personal as you like. You know, again, I think it's all about making them unique and making them something of interest. And, you know, you also have to think that a lot of times you may have friends and family that are likely going to be your early contributors. So, you know, the more personal things might be more appealing to them, especially right off the bat. And so I definitely think it's a good idea to make um, personal type perks. You know, some people do hand drawn images, some people take photographs, they'll write poems. Um, all those things are interesting. It really just depends on the audience that, that you're going out. But you do want to keep in mind, you want to try and have a good balance of your perks. So you want to have lower price points for people who might not have a ton of money but are still interested and passionate about helping you succeed. And then you also want to have everything up to a really stretched price point for um, maybe there's corporate corporations that come across your campaign or strangers that are really passionate and want to help you out. Um, so definitely uh, run the gamut. And we actually have a fantastic blog posting on perk pricing. So if you go to our, our blog and just type in perk pricing, um, you'll actually find a great article on some best practices there. All right, and then a few of you have asked that uh, you're interested in, in learning more about becoming a partner and setting up a partner page. So um, we'll, we'll actually post in an inquiry form that you can fill out if you are interested in partnering with Indiegogo so that you can learn more and, and work with us on setting that up. So thanks so much, everyone. Have a fantastic rest of the week. And again, uh, feel free to check out the, the email that's coming to you shortly, and there will be links to access the recorded versions of our webinars. Thanks, all.